All right, welcome. Um, today, we're going to time a Texo 2600. Uh, this timing procedure is gonna work for many machines in this class. Um, and while the measurements may not be exact, they will get you really close. Um, if your machine uses an M-type bobbin like this, uh, that's probably you. So, um, timing a machine for the first time can be kind of scary, uh, especially if you don't really understand sewing machine anatomy. I'm going to try and break this down so it's something that you can be confident with, because sooner or later, uh, your machine's gonna come out of time, and this can save you time, money, headache, heartache, whatever. So, um, let's work through a little bit of anatomy first. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the end cap off here. Now, I have removed the throat plate screws already because they take forever. Um, but we need to expose this so we can actually see what we're doing. Now, in terms of sewing machine anatomy, there's a few things that you need for this uh, procedure. So this is a standard needle. You'll notice there's a notch on this side. The notch of the needle is called the scarf and it gives the hook a place to catch a loop of thread as it goes around, right? So what hook? Well, when we rotate this around, you're gonna see right here, there's a very sharp looking hook thing right there. So that hook is gonna come around and, and uh, strike, well it won't actually strike, but it, it will pass through the scarf portion of the needle, pick up a loop of thread and make a stitch. So how do we make that happen? Well. Timing is simply adjusting the timing of the needle and the hook so that this machine throws a stitch. Uh, so the first thing to do is determine bottom dead center for your needle bar. So if you hand wheel it, you can just go, go, go. It's really easy to determine this visually, but you'll watch and you'll hit a point where it'll stop at the bottom briefly right before ascending. So that is bottom for this machine. Now, <clears throat> I'm just gonna take a square here, measure to the top of this needle collar, and it says 26 millimeter. So 26 millimeter is bottom center for this machine, uh, based on the point that I'm measuring it from. Um, I'm using the top of the collar because it's an easier reference point to see. And uh, what we need to do, and on this machine and many machines like it, you want two millimeters of rise where the hook uh, hits the scarf. So I'm gonna bring this up. It's registering 26. I'm gonna bring it up to 27 to 28. All right, so that is where the needle needs to be when the hook passes the scarf. Now, this is the slightly tricky part, and you're gonna have to be able to see through here, but you're gonna rotate it, right? And this hook has a point. You want the point of the hook to be centered on the midpoint of the needle going this way and as close to the scarf as you can get it without touching. So I'm gonna rotate this hook up and look through in here till I know that it's halfway on that scarf. Then I'm gonna pull it out this way and get it as close to the scarf as I can without touching. Uh, and then I'm gonna tighten this down. Now, if it's not close enough to the scarf, it may have trouble throwing a loop. So that is something that we need to be cognizant of. So I'll tighten one down here. I'll take a look again. Looks good from here. Okay, there's two screws. This is the one on the back side. So we'll tighten that up. Now we need to reinstall the throat plate and then install a bobbin and see what we've got. Um, for me, installing a throat plate is probably the worst part of the whole process. Uh, it's really hard to get in here. So if you have a low clearance uh, screwdriver of some kind, this would be the time to use it. Now those screws didn't just appear out of thin air. I have a magnet stuck to the front of this machine so that when I'm changing parts out, I don't have to wonder where they went. They don't roll away or anything like that. But. Anyway, so let's go ahead and get this tightened down. And 
and hopefully, if you take good care of your machine, this won't be something that you do often. But there's nothing worse than having it happen and you not knowing how to, uh, how to do it. So ask me how I know. Um, <laughs> I think that uh, I had had this machine for like a week before I managed to throw it out of time. So um, in my opinion, one of the best things that can happen to you is have a piece of machinery go down really early on so that you're forced to learn it pretty much from the get-go. And then when you run into issues down the road, they're really non-issues. They take a little time to solve, but they aren't something that, uh, you know, keeps you awake at night. All right. So we'll go ahead and thread the machine, put everything back together, and see if it sews. All right. Install the bobbin. Oh, well, that's encouraging. Install the safety cover. All right, I'll grab a piece of leather here and, uh, and see what we've got. All right, so I tried a few different stitch lengths to make sure that I've got uh, good performance out of the machine. And uh, I'll take a look at the backside stitch appearance and make sure everything looks good there. Backside stitch looks normal. Front side stitch looks normal. Got a couple different lengths here. So uh, I think we were successful. Um, so that's that, all right? So there's not really anything to be afraid of. There's only a few moving parts. And armed with that knowledge, you don't have to be broke down. Just uh, spend a few minutes at your machine and you'll be good to go. Thanks for watching and uh, 